Greetings, Faith Chapel. So here we are gathered together again to worship our Lord. And what times we are living in to indeed turn ourselves to God and to worship, giving praise and thanks. So let us do so by starting prayerfully. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, in the midst of these chaotic times, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you walk with us, that you uplift us, that you provide comfort to us and a peace that we just don't fully understand. So we ask you now, Lord, that you open our hearts, open our minds, so that we may fully worship you. And that our fears of this world are leached away. So that the only fear that remains is of displeasing you. We praise you, Lord, for all that you give and hope that we can open ourselves to receive it all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and it is from chapter 25, and it's verses 14 through 30. It is called the parable of the bags of gold, and you've probably heard this one before. But let me set it up just a little bit before I read the words of Scripture. In this parable, Jesus has been talking with his disciples and others and telling them about what it will mean when he himself comes again. So this parable is a way for Jesus to kind of unpack that in story form for everyone to help them to begin to understand. Because even now, so many years later, we still don't fully understand what it means for Christ to come again. So listen to Jesus' words. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his abilities. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid 
and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on a deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever, has, for whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of our Lord. For some, that last guy, the one who dug the hole and hid the money, we kind of cringe and go, well, that's not cool. The guy actually brought back his money, but he wasn't given the money to hide it. He was given it to grow it, to make more. We live in a world where we have inflation, where the prices of things do not stay stagnant but rise constantly. We live in a world in which our pay raises and the monies that we receive don't grow equally to those types of things. And so there's a space where we struggle. And this parable, as I said, was Jesus trying to explain what it means when he says that he will come again and what it will look like. And Jesus, in, these, in this parable, he's trying to explain that a person who is given abilities and skills and gifts from God, that person, when they take that and they use it and they multiply the things that God has asked of us to do, and most of the time this is spreading the faith, that when that person does that, they gain so much more back, that they themselves experience abundance. And even if our abilities and skills are not as great as someone else, we're still meant to use them. We are meant to give them out and to grow them so that they can be used to spread the kingdom of God. And that last guy that hides what he has in the ground and just returns exactly what he was given Christ is telling us it's those who will be cast out. That they chose not to truly believe in the gifts and our abilities given, but that we chose to fear. And yes, we are to fear our Lord. But God's given us these gifts, these abilities, so that we do not stay the same person that we started as. That our faith grows and that we share that faith, and that we grow that faith, and we step out in that faith. And that when Christ does come again, that he will indeed separate those from his flock, those who chose to simply hoard their gifts, who chose to just stay exactly who they are, rather than being Christ-like, rather than serving our Lord and our God here and now. Good things to think about. 
Are we all using our God-given gifts and abilities for what God has chosen for us to do? Are we growing those things? Are we serving in our best possible way? Good thing to think about. Amen. So let us end our time together in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts, the abilities, the skills, and for our faith. You, Lord, have given them all to us. And it is you, Lord, who continues to help us to grow, who continues to walk with us when we struggle. And it is you who calls us by name so that we can be reminded that we are your beloved children and that you give with abundance and that we share in that happiness and that abundance. We pray, Lord, for your continued walking with us. And we pray for each other, Lord, for you have called us each differently, but together as one body in Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be safe and well, my friends, and I look forward to talking to you soon.